Hey folks, October 19th. It's a beautiful day here on the Cumberland Plateau Escarpment. It's almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit and we got honeybees flying this morning. I thought it'd be a good day to get out and take a look at some trees and bring y'all along. You know, we haven't talked about oak trees so far in our series and I thought today would be a good day. We don't think about oak trees as nectar sources because as you know, they're not, but they are excellent sources of pollen. And th there's also a thing called honeydew that can sometimes be derived from trees like oak trees and other hardwood trees where insects like aphids will uh, suck the sap from the leaves and then they will secrete a sugary substance that can then be harvested by honeybees, ants, and other insects. We'll talk a little bit more about honeydew. I was really surprised to read up on it and how popular it is in other parts of the world. Not as common here, but I found it very interesting. Y'all stick around. We'll, we'll talk more about that and take a look at some of these trees. Okay, folks, here we've got a scarlet oak. Notice how the leaves have pointed ends and are not lobed. That's the major difference in the red oaks and the white oaks. But the northern red oak bark has a lot deeper furrows than the scarlet oak. And you, you can see this, there's almost a, a pinkish tint to the bark. The scarlet oak has amazing, spectacular color in the fall. Hence the name scarlet oak. Okay, next to it here we've got a, an old chestnut oak. Notice these leaves have a very characteristic shape. Rather large. The bark on the chestnut oak is has pretty deep furrows. Here's a white oak. Notice how the leaves have lobed edges as opposed to the pointed edges. Major difference in the white oaks and the red oaks. You can see the bark has a white coloration to it, almost. These are one of my favorite oaks. When the white oaks have the opportunity to grow out in the open, they're just amazingly beautiful. Okay, it's neighbor here. It's like a chinkapin oak. Notice how the leaves look similar to the chestnut oak, only smaller. A little bit more. A little bit more pointed lobes. The acorns of the chinkapin have little stripes on them. Let's see if I can find one here. Deer absolutely love these acorns. They're sweeter than most of the other acorn varieties, from what I understand. Here's an old white oak stump. It was a tree that I accidentally killed. I girdled it with a zip line that I had tied between it and this chinkapin oak over there uh, when I had a tree house here when the kids were young. And so we got plenty of firewood out of it, but I'd have much rather got the firewood from a down tree in the woods and save this old white oak. But the lesson learned on that one. I'll go over here and take a look at the bee yard from this vantage point. Looks like we're going to have some pretty good colors this fall. We had had enough rain late in the summer, I think, to, uh, to get them the moisture that they need to put on a good show. Nice young tulip poplar here growing up in the fence row. I'm going to let, let, let it grow. More resources for the girls. Yeah, I tried to teach Riley how to stack firewood, and now she just carries my firewood off. Where you going, girl? Come here, Riley. Bring that piece of firewood back. Here we've got a pin oak tree. My lovely wife set out about eight years ago. It's just now beginning to get some height to it. 
they grow pretty slow. Beautiful tree. I love the way they have a pyramidal shape. And they look a lot like the red oak leaves, except they're they're more slender. And turn a beautiful red color in the fall. And oak. This one looks to be an old chestnut oak. Got a huge old white oak behind it. Hey, Riley, what are you doing? Come here, girl. Bring my firewood back. Hey, folks. Thanks for hanging around. We're going to talk a little bit more about oak trees and look at some cool slides. Please hit that subscribe button and thumbs up if you hadn't already. It really would help me out. Oak trees are in the genus Quercus, and there are over 600 species of oak trees worldwide. We're going to talk about just a few of those today. And I'm going to put a link in the description of the video to a PDF that you can download, which will um, allow you to key out native oak trees in your area. Well, at least in eastern North America, uh, east of the 100th meridian is shown on this map. You can basically break the oak trees down into two different subgenuses, white and red. The white oaks being in the subgenus Leucobolinus and the red oaks being subgenus Erythrobolinus. The main difference in these is the shape of the leaves. The white oaks will have rounded lobes, whereas the red oaks will have pointed lobes. Here's a picture of some flowers of an oak tree early in the spring. And uh, oak trees are monoecious, meaning that they have both male and female flowers. You can see in this image here, the catkins for the male flowers hanging down full of pollen. The, the female flowers are kind of tiny there over on the left. And so these are uh, wind pollinated. You will get some cross hybridization amongst the oak trees within their subgenuses, and which makes it very difficult to identify uh, the hybridized oaks. And that's why they're mainly just categorized as red and white. Okay, here we're gonna take a look at some ranges real quick of, of the different oak trees that we took a look at outside. Here's a scarlet oak. You can see the range. Uh, the, these range maps came from that field guide that I mentioned that you can download yourself. What I really like about this is it gets down to the county level. And here's the range for scarlet oak, Quercus coconea. I may be pronouncing that wrong. Okay, chestnut oak. Here's the range for that, Quercus montana. White oak, Quercus alba. White oak is a very important timber species. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, further, further along in the presentation. Okay, here's the range for chinkapin oak, Quercus muhlenbergi. And chinkapin, as I mentioned outside, uh, has uh, very uh, good acorns that uh, deer seem to love. The natural range of pin oak. Now, pin oak is a very common landscape tree uh, that you'll find all over the U.S., I'm supposing, but uh, this is the natural range. Okay, when you take a look at honeybee.net, and I'll, as, all, as always, I'll put a link to this in the description of the video, and, then, and, and when I go into uh, to my region, Appalachian and Uplands region, uh, you'll see the Quercus genus listed. The oaks, oak trees are listed here as a non-significant source. And of course, that's just for pollen, as we mentioned earlier. Which brings us to honeydew, so, sometimes known as oak honey, also known as forest honey. Really interesting. When I got to reading up on uh, the how you could possibly get a, a honey-like substance, if not honey, from various trees, including oak trees. I'll put a link to to this in the in the description of the video so you can take a look at it for yourself 
but uh, but I basically just wanted to highlight this article here. And it, it talks about how honeydew honey is known to be one of the most unique, most intriguingly exotic honeys in the world. It's been acclaimed as a special honey, even among the specialties. The bees love honeydew and feed on it to culminate into an absolutely spectacular 100% organic end product, making it uniquely different from regular honey made from the flower blossom nectar most of us know. You can see here a picture of an aphid uh, working on a little leaf stem and uh, they will they will basically feed on the leaves and the stems and then only uh, they can only use a very small maybe one to two percent of this liquid uh, as a protein source and so the rest is is excreted as a sugary substance it it uh, it said in the article that it's uh, flow is often strong in late dry summers it's uh, highly appreciated in certain parts of the world by connoisseurs and honey lovers alike for its strong flavor and healthful properties. You know, down here at the bottom, it says the, uh, uh, the, while the composition of honeydew honey varies by the type of insect and plant, just as composition of blossom honey varies by the type of blossom, there are some common differences. In general, honeydew honey is higher in minerals and amino acids, as well as higher molecular weight sugars, oligosaccharides, which are prebiotics, that have a beneficial effect on bacteria in the digestive system. And here's a picture of an ant harvesting some honeydew from an aphid. I thought this was cool looking back in uh, John Lovell's 1926 book, Honey Plants of North America. You can see here an excerpt from, uh, I believe this, yeah, this was page 46. I'll put a link to this book in the description of the video um it's in public domain however i couldn't find a pdf what i did find though was a was a web-based copy of it and so you can go to this that web page and go through page by page or you can look at the table of contents and then go to the specific page uh, by entering that in up in the uh, the address bar but uh, but you'll you'll figure that out when you if you decide to click on it but I just wanted to share this this one part of this with you here where it talked about um, some people thinking that you can actually get honey from oak trees and it says here uh, there's not a trace of nectar in flowers yet there is a general impression among beekeepers that the oaks are a source of honey thus a Florida beekeeper writes quote last spring the bees stored 150 pounds of oak honey I've known for several years that the oak yields nectar, end quote. Many other beekeepers have made similar statements. Honeydew is often very abundant on the foliage of the oaks and has been described in the chapter on honeydew. The bark lice, which secrete this sweet liquid, are not infrequently mistaken for buds or galls. When the honeydew is light colored and fairly palatable, it may easily be mistaken for honey. So back in 1926, uh, uh, they were talking about honeydew. Very interesting. And taking a look at some of the historical uses, they were traditionally used as a food source for Native Americans. They could uh, be boiled to remove some of the uh, tannins and, uh, and, and some of the bitter taste. Uh, but the, the oils could be pressed from the acorns and used to alleviate joint pain. The uh, white oak, in particular, is used to make staves for barrels. Uh, due to the fact that uh, a very special anatomical structure called tylosis, which is a gum-like substance that plugs the wood pores of the heartwood and prevents it from leaking. Unlike, unlike red oak, the red oaks uh, do not have that, and so they, they will actually leak. Uh, also, our, uh, shipbuilding in colonial times, the white oak was the preferred lumber. Well, there you have it, folks. The outstanding oak. Uh, more of a resource to the honeybees than I really realized in more ways than one. Important lumber source, excellent food source for a variety of wildlife, and a beautiful tree and on top of that. Thank y'all so much for watching my video and uh, hope to be making more soon. May God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless your bees.